So I think the question that many of our Muslim brothers and sisters are wondering, who are listening, maybe some of our non-Muslim friends as well, who are wondering is, does this coincide or can it coincide with our beliefs as Muslims? Okay. Evolution. Do we believe in it as Muslims? Okay. So we just need to step back a few steps before we answer that question. Anything in science, there may be times that something in a scientific journal or a scientific theory or scientific conclusion yeah it may contradict islam and there may be things which confirm with islam so right? what do you do then exactly what do you do now i'm going to give a general point and then we'll home into evolution okay right a general point is this we have reasons why we believe the quran is the word of god yes we have separate and you guys are going to do episodes on that god willing you know on this issue why Quran is true, this issue why the Prophet, peace be upon him, is a true messenger of God. You have evidence for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, of course, have evidence on the other side too. Now, when you have two pieces of evidence which contradict, they both can't be true. So what we as Muslims believe is that science is a source of knowledge, yeah. but at best, it's not going to give you concrete, absolute knowledge. Quran is a source of knowledge which we know with certainty is absolute and true. Now there may be times in which the Quran confirms science, there may be times in which the Quran contradicts what science is saying. As long as we understand that the reality is God's word and God's world, which science tries to discover, in reality we know they can't contradict because God revealed the Quran yeah. and God also revealed, not re revealed, sorry, created the world. The world, yeah. So the Quran is God's word. Yeah. But the, they can't wor contradict. The, the world is also God's word Because yeah. God said be and it is yeah. So we know that that contradiction Must be internal It's not out there in reality So Something's being misunderstood somewhere yeah, So somewhere. There's, a, yeah. there's a really good example Which is a case in point right? Okay. Me and you We are sitting here we but, are. Let, but let's go back 60 years Just 60 years I wasn't here so imagine we, were you, were you we here? <laughs> imagine we go back <laughs> okay. 60 years, 70 years, yeah. and we're both sitting down and we're actually doing a radio show instead of this podcast. Now, at this time, the world has a cons the, sorry, the, the scientific world has a consensus. It has a consensus on the idea that the universe is eternal, meaning the universe has no beginning and no end. Okay. And this is what physicists believed. That was consensus. That was a consensus. So they yeah. believed with certainty that the universe is eternal. This was known as the static state theory or model, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, what basically happened is this. That idea completely contradicts the Quran because that idea says the universe has no beginning and in the Quran it's clear the universe has a beginning. Allah is the one that Allah is the one who created the universe, yeah. right? So according to that the, the universe always anyway. existed yeah. So it, that's that's a much stronger argument Against God than evolution was Because the universe has always been here So there's no need for God okay. right? Evolution, even the even evolutionists would say There was a beginning right? Yeah. But with the universe there's no beginning Like So the most direct You can imagine contradiction Between the Quran and science Is, is not evolution Is actually what happened about 70 years ago Okay, Because there's a direct contradiction So then what happened? After a few decades, we discovered that the Big Bang model makes more sense of the data because new data came. And the scientific world then changed its mind that the universe actually has a beginning. Wow. Now, just like that. Yeah. I mean, it took a long time. I mean, some of the scientists were not happy with it and it took a long time. Especially what's interesting is the Soviet scientists. Yeah. The communist scientists yeah. They didn't like it Because it was An idea which was giving more air To religious beliefs mm -hmm. So they were the like The least likely to accept it yeah. Anyway So there's a contradiction In the Quran Which Later on Is no longer a contradiction Now Why did yeah. this happen? Because what science The way science works Is this Me and you are scientists And we're, we're, we're scientists And we're trying to work out What is the colour of swans we're like, that swan's white, that swan's white, that swan's white. We've seen 500 swans. Okay. So we come up with the theory, all swans are white. white. In the future, we may discover a black, a black swan. swan. Mm. Therefore, our previous theory, all swans are white, goes out the window. Down the bin. Yep. In the bin. So, 
in science, you can always have a new con- new observation yeah. which can challenge your previous theory. And that's why science isn't reliable as something individually. I wouldn't say not reliable. I would say that, that's why it's beautiful because it can always change its conclusions. Okay. Yeah. It's not something which I've made a, I, I as a scientist, I've made a conclusion yeah. and I'm going to stick to it forever. I think I see where you're going here. Is where you're going, science can always be changed and yep. it's always changing based on discovery, research, etc., etc., etc. But Islam is not going to change. Yes, but also something else which I was adding is that by looking at science, yeah. we look at it has weight because of these reasons. Okay. We look at the Quran and it has weight because of these reasons. Yeah. So when we come across what looks like a contradiction, either we've misunderstood the Quran or we've misunderstood science, or actually no, those are the two possibilities. Either we misunderstood the Quran or we misunderstood science. So we need to look at it like this. The Quran has weight and so does scientific conclusions. But the Quran as a as a book, we know that certain things that it says it may contradict science today but maybe perhaps in 100 200 500 years time science will revise its conclusions and that will be more in line with the quran yeah. it's not necessary that's going to happen in the future and this is why it's very important that if we understand the rhetoric the rhetoric behind evolutionary theory at a popular level yeah. and at an academic level is totally different when it came to say the, the universe having no beginning yeah there was a very clear, powerful reason for that according to the scientific data. Later on, we discovered it was wrong. With evolutionary theory, the way that we are taught it in schools, in textbooks, by popular writers like Richard Dawkins is it's as true as the shape of the earth. It's as true as there's a table in front of me. What's interesting, Musa, is when you go and look at it academically, they believe it's not as true as that. They believe it's based on a probabilistic framework mm. and it has assumptions and there are disputes about its core ideas. Uh, okay. within the, within, and these aren't within religious circles. These are within secular academic circles. Okay. So there's a big... And the question we need to ask is, why is there such a big difference between the public understanding and the academic understanding? So let me give you an example, right? Uh, Victor Stenger, famous militant atheist who passed away a few years ago, he said the prospect that Darwin's broad theory of natural selection is going to get changed in the future is just as likely as us finding out the Earth is really flat. Like it's never going to happen. <laughs>